Welcome to another Model A Ford Mini Guide. So in this Mini Guide I'm going to talk about the lower plate in the distributor. Just a couple of things to notice about it. So this is the lower plate. This is a reproduction lower plate. Uh, you can see it's got the plate here, two indexed screw holes, a pigtail wire with a flag terminal, and then it's got these insulated rivets here which connect to this tab which is called a bus bar. So the function of the lower plate is to sit in the distributor housing. These uh, screws connect right about there. And the uh, Visible through here is the tab, the ignition cable is going to go in here. There's threads for this to go in and contact that tab right there. And then this hole is where the bus bar screw goes to connect the condenser to the bus bar and the primary ignition circuit. You can see the condenser goes in this hole and secures with a screw right there. The lower plate does basically one thing. It provides a framework, a substrate, for this tab, this bus bar, and the attached pigtail to be anchored in the right spot. And they, it also needs to prevent them from grounding to the plate itself or to the distributor body. And that's what I want to talk about today because there are a bunch of different ways that this circuit can ground accidentally. When the ignition cable comes in, it presses on this, and so it can press this out of position and this tab can ground to the body here. It can also pivot and so this, these little loops can go this way and ground to the body. Or the pigtail can ground to the body where it connects to the upper plate. You want to take steps to make sure that none of these possible ground paths actually happen. The main way that you can ground the lower plate is by threading in the ignition cable all the way. When that happens, you push on this tab and you can push it out of position. A lot of people want to screw this in all the way, but you really do not need to. So I'll just show you real quick why you don't need to screw this all the way in. So here's the hardened ignition cable. So you can see the end here has a spring on it. As you thread this into the distributor body, this contacts the tab, the spring compresses, and eventually the spring can't compress any farther. And then it'll just start to push the tab out of position. So it screws in here, and, and watch how far this goes. So look, I've only turned that in one full turn. You can see already it is almost contacting the center of the distributor body. The tab is going to be, it's going to be like right here, well within the range of this plug. So even screwed out this much, you've made great contact. You do not need to screw this in all the way. You can see how if you screw this in all the way, this is going to run out of room. So you can see right there, even just here, it's, it's almost, the spring is almost entirely compressed. So now you know the first thing you can do to avoid grounding this lower plate, which is don't screw the ignition cable all the way in. But there's cases where you might accidentally screw it too far in, or you're helping somebody else and they don't know to not screw it all the way in. So there's a couple other things that you can do to help avoid grounding the lower plate. So if you can see, this tab is curved around here. And on some of these reproduction lower plates, this curvature kind of stops. So the, this tab will actually stick straight out. And when it sticks straight out, it is going to want to run into the side of the body. So one of the things that you can do before you put your lower plate in is to just get a pair of pliers and real gently increase the curvature here so that this, so that there's some space between the end, edge of this, the lower plate, and the edge of the tab. 
Now, what's this tab for? This tab connects the bus bar to the condenser. Well, sometimes. Sometimes you're using modern points, which means you don't have a condenser here. You got the condenser up here. So if there isn't a condenser here, then one of the problems is that the, the thing which is supposed to give this tab, the bus bar, a little more structural rigidity, the fact that it connects to this rigid condenser, which is going to be right here, that's not there. And so what can happen is uh, this can get bent, can get bent up so that it touches the plate, can get bent out. So one thing that you can do if you are using the modern points is you can install a dummy condenser. Now, the parts houses, they will sell you a dummy condenser. Looks like this. Not actually a dummy condenser. It's just the visible part of the condenser shell so that when you've got this installed, it's gonna look like this so that it sort of vaguely looks like you have a condenser in there. But if you look in here, you can see obviously there is no condenser. And if you've got the lower plate installed and the condenser shell installed, you can see there's a big gap here. So one thing you can do is to, to actually build a little, an actual dummy condenser. And you can do that with a 5 8 dowel. So you, what you do is you take your dowel and you cut it down to just under two inches. Uh, you, you can do a little trial and error to figure out the exact right length for it. But you cut it down and you sand it if needed so that it'll go straight into this condenser shell. And now it's about the right length. And so once you have, once you've bent this to fit, you'll be able to connect this dummy condenser with a screw, with a wood screw through that hole and what that's going to do is it's going to give this a little more structural rigidity. It's going to push and hold it in place. So you can see I've put a little hole in the center. It's important that the hole is in the center because that's where you're, that's where you would mount a real condenser and if you aren't picky about it then what can happen is this can end up bent, bent up toward the toward the plate and then it you won't you won't get the kind of structural rigidity that you would get if you try to do it accurately so what you do is you make a little hole and uh, you know use a center punch and drill a little hole out so what you're going to do now is attach your lower plate using the screws and lock washers um, but leave them a little bit loose leave a little bit of play in for just for right now once you get those screwed in gently, take a look through the hole where the bus bar screw connects and make sure that the hole in this tab is centered, or as centered as you can get it. If it needs to be centered a little more, you can very gently take a center, you can very gently take a roll pin punch and just pull a little bit. Don't, don't put too much force, just a little bit. Try to get that just as centered as you can. So now take your dummy condenser with a hole in the center, feed it through, don't, uh, don't screw it in yet, and make sure, make sure that lines up. Try to get it as lined up as you possibly can with the hole right in the center of the hole in the tab. So there you go. That's pretty good. That's about as good as I can get it. So now, once you've fitted these, now use a screwdriver and drive a wood screw into that and attach them together. It's probably helpful to have a magnetic screwdriver, otherwise you're going to lose that screw. All right, so here is, you can see, I've got this installed. You can see the end of the tab is nice and far away from the distributor body, so that won't ground out. And this is screwed in here, so it's nice and tight. This is still centered. These are tightened down. So this thing's not going anywhere. All right, so that takes care of the potential for 
grounding out through this tab, this tab possibly moving out of position. So you took care of that. And of course, again, this is only if you're using modern points. If you're using stock points, then you've got a condenser in here. And then you, what you would have here is um, not just the screw, but you'd have a fiber washer that goes under the screw. And that fiber washer is actually supposed to act kind of like a, like a pillow almost. Uh, it's, it's larger than this hole and it, it just acts as a, an insulator just in case this moves. You'd have a fiber washer that would, that would go between this screw and the distributor body. And uh, ideally, at the, uh, at this, in this hole here, you should put, there's a urethane, sometimes called a distributor plug, sometimes called a condenser plug, um, but it just fits right into this hole here. They used to, in the beginning, Ford actually sealed these with wax. Um, and so every time you mess with it, you would have to reseal this with a wax plug, but the urethane plugs they make now, um, they, they're reusable. So that's good. I do not have one because there's a supply crunch on it at the moment. Uh, because of the COVID pandemic, and I could not get one in time for this video, but um, you should put a urethane plug in here, and that will protect this against uh, dust, water, any kind of contamination coming in. All right, so you've got uh, you've got your dummy condenser installed. You got these tightened down. You know that you're not supposed to screw your ignition cable in too far, and then the last potential problem with grounding is this little pigtail here. So I'm going to put my upper plate in and then I'll show you uh, what to look for for that. All right, so I got my upper plate on and uh, just take a look at that super shiny polished distributor cam right there. Paul Shin, if you're watching that cams for you. All right, but so you've got your upper plate on and the pigtail from the lower plate is going to come through right here in this little cutout and what you need to do is oh, take this nut off put the flag terminal in and put that nut back on so i'm going to do that and then i'll show you what we're looking for all right so we've got the pigtail on and what you are concerned about is the fact that there's not a whole lot of clearance here between this wire and the flag terminal and the body of the distributor. So what you need to make sure you do is when you mount this, get that flag up kind of high, get it away from the body. And then after you've mounted it, after you've gotten that nut in position, what you want to do is kind of take your thumb and just bend it in just a little. See how there's that little angle, slight angle in it? That's going to give you a little more clearance and ideally it should also help you lock that inner nut to make sure that inner nut doesn't loosen at all by by bending that flag terminal you're kind of putting a crimp on it um, so that's uh that's how you avoid having a ground in your lower plate once you have the distributor assembled it's pretty easy to check and see if you do have a short in your lower plate so to do this, you'll need a multimeter or an ohmmeter. So you're going to set it to ohms. So this is right now it says I have an open circuit. And what you need to do is make sure that the points are open. So you see right now the points are closed. So you can just, um, you can rotate the cam, but it's easier to just wedge them open with uh, the, um, they sometimes in the instructions say a business card. But who carries business cards these days? So, you can wedge them open with a Panera card. It's about the right width. So once you do that, take one of your leads and you're gonna put it right in, right in where that dimple is, where the ignition is coming in. And your other lead should go to the flag terminal. And there you can see it's got a circuit uh, with minimal resistance. And that's what you want. And then if I touch an, an unpainted portion of the distributor body, like the oiler here, 
I've got an open circuit again, so there's no, no short here. But if I now pull that card and run this test again, now I've got a circuit. So now, because the points are closed, it does short to the body, which is what you want. That's the idea. Um, just as an article of curiosity, this is another lower plate that is sold by a number of the vendors. This is a wireless lower plate. So the way that this works is you've still got this bus bar, but notice that there's no tab coming off here because this is used exclusively with modern points. So there's no tab at all, which means since there's no tab, there's no way for that tab to ground accidentally. Um, there's also no way for the tab to ground against the plate because the plate itself is made of phenolic. So this plate is non-conductive, so there's no need for insulation. You can see it just goes, these are just screws that go straight, I guess rivets that go straight through the plate. Um, and the way that this is supposed to work, it's kind of interesting. Notice that this only has one uh, screw. Um, so I feel like, really, you're just only going to put the one. But of course, they can't put the other one because this, this um, flange or tab here it was over where it would be. So the way this works is the ignition cable comes in here, and then the current hits the tab, crosses over on these rivets, goes up to this tab. And then what you're supposed to have is right here where the where the flag terminal comes in and connects instead there's a little brass tab that is underneath this nut that goes down and so it has a little kind of a thing that goes down this way and the this wireless is supposed to come up and contact that brass tab make the connection and transmit the current there's a problem which is that you can see this is this is curved, so there's a, a mild arc right here. And even though the lower plate stays in one place, the upper plate moves because you're adjusting your spark advance. So as that upper plate moves, that little tab poking down is sliding back and forth across this arc. And you can actually see, see on mine right here, I had this installed for a little while, see where that tab is making that that little gouge right there but what happens is the the height of this because it's because it's an arc the height of this is not the same as the tab moves across uh, and so what ends up happening is that the tab moves slightly on that terminal nut and gets it gets set at a particular height and then it gets set at the highest height right here and then as it moves across to be on that lower part of the arc, it loses, it's got a little gap now, right? So here it's connecting and now there's a little gap. And so that, that, when that happens, your car will not work. The car will just stop, will just shut down. Uh, and that's what happened to me. And that's why uh, I don't use this anymore. So, but that's another way of trying to solve that grounding problem. You just cut that tab out completely make the lower plate out of phenolic, so that does eliminate a couple of sources of ground. I feel like somewhere, like there's some kind of happy medium of this wireless approach and the traditional approach that would sort of blend the best of both of them, but nobody's making that product right now. Thanks very much for watching, and a big thanks to Paul Shin and to Bob Gimran. It was watching Paul's recording of Bob's tech seminar on rebuilding uh, distributors that inspire me to do this deep dive into the lower distributor plate. So if you are interested in this topic, I strongly recommend the recording of that workshop, which I have posted a link to in the upper right of your player window. Go ahead and click on that if you are interested. Thanks again.